Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Vilgari Observer and I'm going to be showing you um, the process of me painting in these mushrooms. Okay, so hang on. Kind of in the dark right now, so I'm adjusting the brightness. Okay, so we've got the line art layer right here. And then I've blocked in the flats as you can see here so what I'm gonna do now is set the line out to multiply I think I used black or dark brown I don't remember but uh, pretty much dark brown or black okay so a new layer over here clipped to the one below so we can just start right now I'm using my own brush it's called paint roller and I am thinking of using the color white and red. So let's take that color and go darker. How does this look? Okay, it looks fine. A bit big though, so reduce the size. So what I'm doing is I'm painting in the darks, the shadows. I'm not using the multiply layer though. Um, it's just a habit that I've acquired. And I've only been doing this for about a month, but I really like this process i just think it saves a lot of time so what i do is i paint in the flat colors i paint in the shadows and i paint in um well most of everything on a normal blending mode layer and I only use stuff like Multiply and Linear Dodge or whatever else available that us digital artists like to use. I only use that towards the end, just as finishing touches. I just find that painting in the shadows on normal layers doesn't make it look weird at all. So I've been doing it this way. It just saves a lot of time because I haven't been, I've been drawing since digitally, at least since uh, 2016. And to this day, until earlier this year, I haven't been um, the wisest when it comes to managing my layers and the kind of workflow I should follow. And I've only about, um, come across this workflow since over a month ago, I guess, and I really like it. So I've been doing it this way. And hopefully, on your end, this should translate to is simply me not taking all that long to paint. Okay. And also, um, I don't really know if the color white and red will end up looking all that good, but like with most pieces of art, as long as there's lights and darks, these kinds of things shouldn't really matter. Okay, so we'll take that color, shift it a little bit sideways and we'll go. Let's just add touches of other color. It's still in the, sh in the same uh, tone of lightness or darkness 
and now we can go back to this color shift it a little bit make it darker but not 100 percent opacity just for variety and the reference for this well i wouldn't say reference but the inspiration for this i mean they are definitely just mushrooms but this is inspired by the human skin and flesh um so i'm trying to sort of use colors similar to human skin okay i'm blending with this gently this thingy here probably would be good if it would look like a wart make it look kind of creepy because it's a it's a mushroom but it's skin colored it leaves a white person's skin okay um the inside maybe we could make that pink oh, oh 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 hang on make it yellow so it's like fat uh this is a textured brush that i'm using i have been looking for good textured brushes out there for so long, I haven't been able to find any good ones. So I ended up making my own. And I'm quite happy. I made a lot. See? These are all unique. I'm calling it the hand drawing brush. And I'm thinking of making it available for you as well. Just not really sure when. What am I using? Oh, okay, so I was supposed to be using paint roller dry, okay. And once more, this is shadow. slightly darker color okay now let's see how this turns out Let's merge that to the layer below. So I'm going to be adding a multiply now. Oh, hang on. Let's alpha lock this. And I'd like to use linear light. I'd like to change the color of the... Uh, I don't know what you call this part of the mushroom. The trunk? Something more gray. Linear light. Where is it? There. Greenish gray. Well, I guess the trunk doesn't have to look like human skin. Too bright. Darken it some more. In fact, you don't even have to use multiply layers. If you can do this well. Or linear dodge ones even. Um, 
only if you can do it well. Someone multiplying now, I'm thinking of something like this. This color down here. Blue, sure, why not? Purple. Grayish purple. And orange. Here. And let's do small ones too. darker ones drawing okay let's use the glow brush and I've sort of tidied up all the other brushes I've made and I've put it all here which is very neat let's go with a blue on a normal layer oh it's kind of cool how it's glowing I wonder if I should make it glow like that no I don't think so okay delete that let's go back down here and start painting again let's go small erase some of the multiplying stuff As if it's blood spilling out. And the thing with blood is it's kind of convincing if you make smears like this. I know it's kind of gross to talk about it, but I don't know, maybe it's just thing that I remember or even pay attention to whenever I bleed and I look at the blood marks on my hands and I sort of pay attention to how they start drying and they don't really ever come off your skin unless you scrub it real hard when you wash your hands or whatever part of body of yours was bleeding and 
because of that I sort of just memorized how blood looks dried ones is that, is that weird? Hmm. I guess it's just a thing that I like to pay attention to might look kind of gnarly. Lower opacity, add it here. You can overlap to make some spots darker. The stuff that overlap will look darker. So it looks like a mushroom. But it's supposed to have a bone and blood and skin theme. So it's like a bunch of bones bursting out from inside. And blood is seeping out. Let's have a few drips. Add it manually by hand. Leave a little highlight. A little droplet here. That's too much. Okay. Add a little bit here too. I might have a brush that could be good for texture. Let's give this one a try. Ooh, it's too big. Okay, wonder if it will look good if we turn this off, it looks kind of nice, so let's redo the highlight, might be able to use obscure glass, let's take the same color, oof no. See, this is what I mean. What if we just paint in the highlights on the normal layer using pure white? Not a hundred percent opacity. Here and there. Yeah, okay. Looks nice. Wonder if I can fix it somehow. I have an idea. Let's call this fix this layer, the fixes layer. Let's add, it should really make sense, but 
this should help you sort of distinguish the thorns from the mushrooms okay not everywhere Maybe we can make that brighter. No. Darker? Darker looks good. Okay. Mushroom one's done. Right, moving on to mushroom number two. So for the mushroom number two, I am planning on it being blue. Don't see many blue mushrooms. I don't think I've seen one in real life. Only on the internet. parts more intensely saturated what if we use obscure glass now although obscure glass might be too too big. The textures might be too big. So let's just use this. Okay, no. Okay, let's go with that for now. Lot, I mean. And now, let's take this color. Oh, before we take that color, I'd like to make the thorns bright yellow. Some are fat, some are skinny. Not really trying to um, be super accurate because I'm going to be zooming out. Anyway, when I zoom out, none of the uh, flaws will show. So it doesn't matter. Although it's good to just not be too untidy. you're following along fine I don't think I'm going too fast right should be okay no, let's go super dark but not 100% opacity So the color source, the 
color source. The light source is right here. So the shadows are sort of just uh, leading away from that point. Facing away from that point. Also shadows for the uh, thorns. So it's still under the same layer. As you can see, I haven't moved. It's still here, see? It's like um, I'm one layering this. Sort of. Um, I can sort of go again to make certain parts darker because this is not 100% opacity. So going over it again will make some parts darker than before. And we're kind of emulating the um, the way multiply layers work by doing it this way. Which is just by going extra dark, but not at 100% opacity. That might be me underestimating, well not underestimating, oversimplifying the power of multiply layers, but for the sake of an easier and faster workflow, at least for me, I prefer doing it this way. So, Let's go bright. Uh, maybe we can add manually add highlights this way. Oh, and also, I'm not trying to make a super rendered drawing or something or anything like that so the goal is to just sort of give you a an understanding of what I'm trying to draw here which is just like a blue mushroom with thorns coming out of it like the mushroom in the first picture now, I don't know if it was, this will look good but let's go with gray or black go for like uh, 50% opacity. I mean, I know it's not like a, it's not common people using black for shadows. And I'm not trying to say it's wrong either. It's just, I mean, like if that's the kind of aesthetic you're going for, then go for it. But I guess it's also a way of just not thinking much when you're trying to draw. So your drawing ends up finishing faster because of it. Let's add a glow again using, what is this? Frosted glow. Let's take this color. Too bright. Too, too bright. 
you white. I might be able to. Okay. This color is better. That might be too yellow. Now we might actually need the help of linear dodge layer now. Not assist, okay. Add. Oh, let's go with glow. Let's disable the, uh, okay, that one. Do that again, click below, add. It's way better. Let's add that to blue from the mushroom. Reflect it below. Okay. Let's draw again by hand. Pure white, not a hundred percent opacity. Not big enough. Okay. And now we do this. Highlights. Okay, mushroom two is done. So time for mushroom number three. Okay, so for the third mushroom, I think I'll be doing this one because there are two left, this one and this other one, but they're kind of similarly designed. So it will look like I'm just doing number one and number two again. So instead, I think I will just be doing this one. So kind of a gray stem, stalk. I don't really know the anatomy of mushrooms. I better look it up after this because uh, I draw a lot of mushrooms. Uh, leading to white probably so those could be the shadows yeah okay almost white you know what what if we change the background color to gray I wonder if that will look good Not sure, let's keep it for now. Okay, make the whole thing white-ish. Can always fix it later. This is a pure monochrome gray, by the way. It's not like a grayish yellow, grow with grayish blue, whatever, it's just straight up. Not black, kind of gray. In between black and white. Actually, these days I have been quite interested in trying to. Um, try a new method 
of drawing and it's quite interesting actually it makes everything look sort of old school and that method of drawing happens to be just adding in all of the shadows initially using black here and there and then after I do that I simply just add the flat colors and I'm done like that's it I'm quite interested in it so you might see me doing it like that in the future like if if that works out well somehow I'll be doing it that way and I'll be showing you okay I'm thinking for the uh, cap of the mushroom and I, <laughs> I looked it up it actually is called the cap of the mushroom I'm thinking it should be blue like a dark blue like a not so saturated indigo or a slightly saturated Payne's gray some more of that nice darks and just scatter I mean add some of these scattered textures just here and there yellow stuff showing through we should probably look better if it's um, bluish so I'm trying to go over and over them with some blues it's not really all that important though I mean I just wanted this mushroom to have like a textured surface of the cap at least Take this color again. Uh, and see, that's what I like about this brush. Well, lots of them behave the same. Um, but I'll show you here. See? Nothing's coming out. Barely anything's coming out very nice for applying texture and this is me drawing without putting any pressure on the iPad but if I add a little bit of pressure I can get those nice flats opaque really fill in a lot of areas like that because uh, let me show you another example I kind of um, prefer for gradations at least I kind of prefer the look of that compared to an airbrush. See, so I'll show you here. Can you tell? It's like this looks sort of smooth, but if you look closely. these parts see you can see 
where you can see the banding so it doesn't look smooth the gradation but the textured brush textured brushes actually most of the ones out there at least even if it's not mine because there's textured anyway it's very easy to make it look like it's a gradation like you cannot complain that it's textured because that's what it's supposed to do anyway right so I just like it and if you add more another layer on top it still looks like it blends seamlessly still and I can even block it in even more see that I don't know maybe it's just a thing that I like textured brushes let's go back here and these parts are supposed to be sort of like uh, warts like just lumps on the cap of this mushroom and so since lumps are three-dimensional in shape they do need a shadow shadows so we're gonna have to add that and um, I'm gonna try adding it like how I did it for this mushroom which is to just do it on the same layer by using a dark color but then not going all the way 100% with the opacity here we go looking good shadows for these parts too and I'm not even sure how much of the detail you're supposed to be able to make out because this is supposed to be a dark colored mushroom to begin with although I know that I want this part the inner part to be white ish like a normal button mushroom the kind you eat on pizza so a bright blue on top here for the outer layer Okay, for the striations, no, not striations yet. For this part, okay, this way, an insect is eating it. And I don't know what color the insect should have. Should it be glowing? Might be a good idea to have it glow. Okay, for these striations now. The 
these parts below. Need some attention there. darker or you know what let's do this part first it again when that happens I wonder if that still happens with the new M2 iPads I think it's called palm rejection okay darker ones more mm. these things I don't know what they are could be stones I mean pebbles, because of course they're tiny. Okay, I think I've spent enough time for that part down there. Now back to the insect. What color should you have, my friend? Maybe a slightly blue, slightly cerulean color for Mr. Moth here. Let's give you a bright blue antenna. Antenna? Antennae? If you're into biology, you could correct me. Dark grayish head. Yeah. And also, don't they all have um, black eyes? Don't think I've ever seen even a photo of a moth with color eye colors that are not like uh, black. So I think they're always black. Let's make that black. So our well, um, moths are supposed to have that. Uh, Twirly twirly proboscises. Proboscises? Proboscai? Anyway, I think it's called a proboscis. It's supposed to be like a twirly twirly thing. Like it goes like that. But this one's got pincers instead. So it's closer to being an ant. Okay, for the body, same color, I guess. Although I will darken it later.
gray body with bits of a darker color I mean a brighter color sort of showing through kind of like a uh, white stripes on a dark gray body or it could be dark stripes on a white body okay let's add shadow here that's one leg here's another white but not a hundred percent opacity so that's okay and now the wings what color should they have What if they had near white wings with like black spots, black dust all over them, I guess. Or I could come up with like a pattern because uh, moths wings sometimes have that. tell if I've covered up all the yellow or not but that doesn't matter because if you can't really see it the difference then I don't think it really matters what matters is what you can make out visually let's go dark again but not 100% for the shadow underneath the eye And underneath the wing, why not? So let's take like a grayish color. What should the pattern be? What if it's just random circles? Make another one here. Make another one in the center. Okay. And another one. And another one. Make that darker. Okay. 
Now, what can we do? What else can we do? I think we can darken this part. Yeah, darken this part. Um, okay, I think it's time to play around with the, uh, with the multiply layer. all that good let's add some oof so dark okay, much better To linear dodge now. Okay, time for frosted glow. Go to the uh, luminance brush. I'm a big fan of this light pen. It's a default Procreate brush. I love it. See what that does? It's just so good. And I'm even doing it on a normal layer. So, this sort of makes it look like it's glowing. See that? Like, it's not much. But it's sort of like it's coming from somewhere over here. I don't know that's too much though. Maybe we could do this one. Oof. <laughs> um, it's too intense. It's like a toothpaste commercial. Um, well, I guess light pen again. Then Let's do another, oh, where is it, hand drawing, this one, and we're going to do it here, The 
Does that look nice or too bright? It might be too bright. Okay, I think that should be okay though. Oh, uh, also, I forgot. I wonder if I can do something to this one. Now that I've looked at it after doing mushroom number three, it looks kind of, and especially after I've changed the background color, might be a good idea to just get back some of these, um, lost edges there the ones below because you cannot really see it because the this lower part is a uh, is dark on top of the dark background so it's hard to make cat and so i'm just doing this now It might not make sense, but it's necessary. Otherwise you won't be able to see what's what. Okay. can also okay too much there a little bit maybe with a bigger one somewhere somewhere else no there nah this one that's ah, too shiny Okay, let's uh, settle with that one. Um, I feel like adding this now to the upper part. Just do it to the, uh, the spikes. Okay, this looks okay. What if we make it white again? Will that look good? I kind of prefer with this darker background. Yeah, let's just go with this. Okay, well, I guess that's that for this week's video. Let me give you a close up. Here's mushroom number one, mushroom number two, and here's the third one. I'll probably finish these two off camera, right? And if you would like to see the finished stuff, I don't know if this one's gonna be out on my art station by the time this video is up, but if I'll give you the link to my art station down below if you anyway, if you wanna check it out. But I do have a lot of my other stuff there, the ones I finished. 
and there are lots of them there so go ahead and check it out and anyway thanks for tuning in this week to another video i hope you enjoyed that hope you learned something new hope it's useful for you and i really appreciate you watching and i guess i'll see you next time and if you'd like to support me support the growth of my channel uh, i would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and also subscribe so i might appear again in your recommended sometime in the future okay and if you want to ask any questions please feel free to do so and i'll do my best to answer okay so have you had i hope you have a good one I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.